The Europa Centre is the oldest shopping centre in West Berlin. The building originally opened in 1962. We're here in the Europa Centre and we're going to go for some things at more than the pink up there. Behind me is a very interesting The minutes 10 to 60 are indicated in the right column. Each of the 30 flattened balls fill every two minutes, corresponding in total to a full hour. The hours 1 to 12 can be read in the left column. The pendulum is propelled by the flow of water in the upper bowl. Below these pipettes, an accurate reading of the pendulum back and forth movement is made as the volume increases in geometrical proportion. As the lower pipette empties, the contents of the small spherical container flow through, developing atmospheric pressure into the minute column. At the end of each full hour, the same procedure is used to advance to the next hour. At 1am and at 1pm, the entire system empties itself to the 1am pm mark, whereupon the cycle begins again. Like the Postama Platz Mall, the Europa Centre has all the shopping facilities one would want. And just like its new modern cousin, the Europa Centre still has time to show the passing visitor some interesting eye candy. Barry and I decided that we wanted to stretch our history of Germany a little further than concrete walls and fascist dictators. So we signed up for the story of Berlin. This was a modern interactive museum that was supposed to help tourists and inform locals of Berlin's undiscovered history. The first thing that we were told was how people were transported across the border using special cars with hidden compartments. The museum was divided up into various categories starting with the arts then revolutions then moving on to the industrial age For a brief second, we both thought that we were back in the factory again. Back to work. We then got a chance to see some rare footage of Berlin, filmed in the 20s and 30s. Thank you. 
Here we go. Eventually, we came across the section on Adolf Hitler. This part of the museum explained Hitler's rise to power through his political ideas, having been appointed leader of the Nazi party in 1933. The tour continued to show his growth in power, which eventually led to the war in 1941, where millions of innocent people were killed. Contrary to people's belief, the wall itself was constructed from concrete and not brick, with a steel frame to give it support and stop people from escaping through a hole that could be made within the wall. The building of the wall commenced on August 12, 1961. Including the surrendering of the war in 1945, this was the second most traumatic event in many Berliners' lives. Many families were torn apart by the wall and more than 100 were killed during the following 30 years that the wall existed for. If anything, this museum is a documentation to the atrocities that are left behind in the wake of power and greed. Today, Berliners have moved on but these images and remaining objects are testaments for generations to see and experience and not to forget. The tour continued with a visit to a real bunker located down the road from the museum, but unfortunately for us, most of the tour was conducted in German. The facility was quite frightening, with its stale smells and cold atmosphere. The tour guide's voice echoed through the corridors that left a chilling feeling of what it must have sounded like during 1943. And without any notice, there was a demonstration of a warning drill that was given when there was a bombing raid. Berlin Stone.